Even with bevels and extra geometry added to soften sharp corners, low-poly models like the one we're building can appear very faceted and angular. Character modelers and artists working in film and broadcast will often create more organic surfaces from low-resolution geometry by using smoothing or subdividing tools, which split each quad into four parts and reduce hard angles. In Maya, this can be achieved by selecting geometry and choosing Mesh Smooth from the main menu, then adjusting the number of smooth divisions. But smoothing geometry by subdividing rapidly drives up the poly count and should be used very sparingly for game asset production. In 3D software, every polygon includes information which determines how light will bounce off the surface. This information is referred to by the term surface normals. We won't dive too much into the technical aspects of 3D geometry in this course, but it is useful to know that we can easily modify the orientation of surface normals to affect a polygon's appearance. When the surface normals are perfectly perpendicular to a face, light appears to bounce right off the surface, sort of like how a rubber ball bounces off of flat ground. The bounce light sharply defines the polygon face, creating the appearance of crisp edges around the face, which make the object appear faceted, like a gemstone. But when the surface normals are set at different angles, light can roll off of the face, much like water would roll off the edge of a slanted surface. Angled normals can soften the transitions between faces to create a smoother, more organic appearance. We can automatically slant the surface normals to create this softer appearance by choosing Mesh Display Soften Edge. When we deselect the object, the entire surface will seem smoother with soft edge transitions between the faces. A close look at the silhouette reveals that no additional geometry has been added, but the surface now appears less angular. However, the shading in the large planar areas is somewhat darker and no longer seems to react to light as we would expect. If we select the object again and choose Mesh Display Harden Edge, the transitions between the faces are once again visibly faceted. To achieve an optimal appearance for a game asset, we could select all the large planar faces or edges and apply the Harden Edge tool and then select regions of the model that need to appear smoother and apply the Soften Edge tool. We'll want to assign soft edges to the joystick and buttons, so we'll select them and choose Mesh Display Soften Edge. The coin return panels have flat, two-dimensional or planar faces, but rounded corners. We can easily select the ring of edges around these panels by right mouse clicking and choosing Edge to switch to component mode, then pressing the up arrow on the keyboard to select the entire edge ring. Then we'll choose Mesh Display, Soften Edge, so that the corners appear smoother. I'll repeat this action for all of the panels. The large side panels should have hard edges along the large planar pieces and soft edges along the extrusion. I'll switch to the top view, right-click to enter edge component mode, then drag a selection box over the edges within the extruded area. Then I'll choose Mesh Display Soften Edge. I'll repeat this action for both panels. If only certain portions of a mesh need to be smoothed, sometimes it's easier to apply either the Harden Edge or Soften Edge tool, then adjust the Angle attribute in the channel box. The Angle attribute determines the threshold for creating a crisp, hard edge. All adjacent edges with angles beneath the threshold will be smoothed, and all adjacent edges with greater angles will be hardened. As it turns out, the Harden and Soften Edge tools are really the same tool. Soften Edge just defaults to an angle of 180, and Harden Edge defaults to an angle of zero. For the main body of the arcade cabinet, we'll soften edges, then set this angle attribute to around 50 to achieve crisp angles along the larger planes and a softer appearance around the edges. By spending just a bit of time applying hard and soft edge settings to the appropriate regions of our model, we can achieve a more detailed and realistic appearance without adding to our poly count.